by Chinese Business, podcast number 12. Hi there, and today's podcast is pretty interesting. Um, it's about an article that I've written on mychinesebusiness.com, and it talks about the salaries in China. This seems to be a very common question people ask me um, when I was back in the States doing some consultancy work. People would just say, Honestly, what's the average salary in China? Do they really work that cheap? Will they really work that many hours? And to be honest, the answer to both questions is yes. But I would need to explain a lot of things here for people to understand this topic. First off, in China, people don't work by the hour. Okay, that's very important because when you hire someone in the States, you know, a contractor that you have an hourly salary, you know, a lawyer will make so much per hour, doctor's visit, uh, plumber, things like that. But in China, it's by the job. So for example, there was a short amount of time there I managed a, a team of programmers for outsourcing for a San Francisco company. And they kept asking me how much per hour. And I would tell them the people I hire, basically I just had found some people through connections and that's how everything works there. It's just, you know, a friend of a friend is a programmer, a friend of a friend can do this, a friend of a friend. And I would always say it's per job. And of course, you know, they didn't like that because they wanted the lowest possible rate. They wanted it done the quickest amount of time. But in China, it's per job. But the thing is, is when you think about it, if it's a small job, Yes, it normally seems to be more expensive, but if it's a big job, anything that would take a week of time or more, you know, a month, two months, it turns out to be extremely cheap. So, for example, let's just talk about some salaries. Oh, but before I say anything more, I do have to mention, when you're talking about per job, remember the key is not the number of hours. So overtime pay, weekend pay, there's no extra. It's just part. Like if you say get this done by next Monday, it's got to be done by next Monday, even if they work 18 hours a day, uh, even if they work Saturday, Sunday, it doesn't matter. If the agreement is to get it done by this time, it has to get done. That's also the same for employees. If you tell an employee, I want this on my desk by Friday, if they're there all Thursday night, there's not overtime pay. They're just there getting their work done. And they, they understand that. But another problem, though, with this is sometimes, I wouldn't say sometimes, there's a good amount of time when things aren't as efficient, though, either. So for an example, someone may be at a desk 10, 12 hours a day, but in that time, Half of it's online, QQ, you know, the same thing as Skype or AIM or instant messaging. Their boyfriend or husband or friends or things like that. They're at the desk, they're in the office, but they're not really productive. So in China, I really found that to get the most productivity out of workers, you had to really micromanage them. For example, in, in our office, what I would do every night beforehand was I would send our secretary a list of everything that was to be done the next day in order and then I'd have her highlighted in red after it was finished. So I wouldn't go to the office every day and but I would expect an email around lunchtime and at night of the progress that was done, what the problems were, when the when it should get done, you know, an estimated guess. And that was the only way I found I could really get a lot of work out of you know, our staff was really to micromanage them, tell them I want this done in this order, you know, quickly as possible. I want you to research this. If you can't find it within 45 minutes, give up and do this, things like that. And if I just said I need this stuff done, it would never get done. It would always be kind of brushed to the side overlooked, done at an extremely slow pace. But again, I didn't want people to be there late at night. I wanted everyone there working, you know, nine to five. And actually our work schedule was 
uh, 9.30 till 6, so it's a little longer, but there were more leeway. But there were occasions where I'd have to make a phone call, say, I need you to get in early in the morning, or I need you to stay after for this, or I need this done, and it would always get done, and there weren't really any complaints. There was the occasional, uh, I haven't seen my boyfriend in a couple weeks, can, can I meet him? when uh, I'd say we need you this weekend uh, but other than that it was okay yes and then we were insisting on extra time such as that we would give bonuses that's another thing in China salaries are low but there's a lot of bonuses a lot of bonuses sometimes people's salary one-third of it will just be bonuses for example you may have a base salary of 2,000 renminbi a month but the average salary for that person is 2,800 renminbi per month. Sometimes it'll be low as 2,400. Other times, you know, 3,500 renminbi. I mean, people don't like really having a high set salary. I mean, employees like that, but employers want to have it based as much on bonuses as possible, based on you know the company's intake of revenue for that month or the previous month or goals met things like that okay so let's talk about some salaries in China so as I'm writing this about a thousand renminbi is hundred and fifty seven or so US dollars so when I just said two thousand renminbi a month you know that's a little over three hundred dollars so let's start with a uh, waitress at a restaurant if you're in Beijing and you go to a normal restaurant that waitress may make as little as 800 renminbi a month or as uh, much as 1,200 renminbi a month so about 140 to 180 US dollars a month she probably works five to six days a week 8 to 12 hours a good part of this is most restaurants though have a little room in the back for the staff to live in or an apartment nearby where they can live so they don't have to pay room and board but normally those rooms are just a bed on the ground or a bed in a bunk bed situation with eight or ten in a room so it's not great accommodations but it's still accommodations I knew some people that worked at call centers this was the case the entire staff was housed on an apartment floor where it was 12 people in a room 100 people on that floor and the salaries were low but then again the people didn't really complain in fact some of the people I talked to I was the first foreigner ever to to walk on their floor and, and when I was visiting my friend and everyone stared at me but some of the people I talked to because we had lunch in the, the apartment room were telling me how much nicer the conditions are there than back at home because where they're from on the farms there wasn't the running water and the bathrooms and stuff like that that were there. So that even though to a Westerner, or a person from a, a different country may think that it's terrible living conditions, relatively speaking, it may actually be pretty good. So waitress, around 1,200 renminbi a month, a nicer restaurant, a little bit higher. Uh, they can speak English at a nice restaurant. That's definitely a bonus. Uh, let's see what else. A coffee shop. A manager at a coffee shop. This surprised me when I first heard it. I had a friend. She's not working there anymore, but she managed a coffee shop for a number of years. And she was telling me her salary was 3,000 renminbi a month. She lived in the coffee shop in the back. She worked six days a week, about eight hours a day on the floor but at any time of day she could be reached you know either her cell phone or just go back in her room so the room was a bonus but it was a tiny room but the staff was I'd say 30 people 30 to 40 people it was a pretty big staff pretty big place and yet she was getting paid about what, 450 US dollars a month college educated English perfect the clientele were a lot of foreigners so other restaurants wouldn't be as much she later transferred to a to manage a restaurant with a staff of over a hundred people I think the total was 120 by chance huge restaurant 
and it turned out that the man had promised her, the owner, a lot of money, kept telling her all these bonuses and that. Her average salary there was about 3,000 RMB as well. So she did quit that job and moved on to some, some other stuff. But so management, about 450 US dollars a month full time. Okay, computer programmer. This is a topic that a lot of people are curious because everyone always hears about outsourcing and making your iPhone apps overseas, making programs over, overseas. Uh, just how competitive is it? A lot of people talk about going to India. Others talk about going to the Philippines. I heard a lot of good things about outsourcing the Philippines. But a computer programmer in China, I had a buddy at Yahoo and Google, IBM, all over, just based on where I was. And it would average around 8,000 to 10,000 RMB a month. So about 1,500 US, give or take. You know, 1,200 US to about 1,600 US a month for full-time programmer working. Um, that's one thing though. A lot of the foreign companies that are there, such as Yahoo, Google, they really do stick to the hours. They really do stick to the nine to five people say, and that's one thing they actually like because they do get overtime and bonuses. So those are a lot of perks to working with with uh, Western companies. But so there's some programmers there. I knew some foreigners that work there, and they would make about 2,000 US a month. And they would kind of laugh because they know they know that back where they're from, you know, the states or Canada, they'd be making you know eight, ten thousand US a month. But the cost of living is completely different, and there's more perks. You know, some of these people they could never get a girlfriend back in the states, but have one or two in China. So it all depends, you know, what you're doing what you think is important in life. Okay, military. Some people were telling me about 2,000 RMB a month, but what people were telling me, they really emphasized on how well the people ate. And they'd always say the meals are very good, they eat very well. That was it, that was what was emphasized there. The salary definitely does depend on what your rank is and where you are. I have a buddy that's a captain, he, I forget what his salary was, I think it was around 4,000 RMB a month, I'm not sure, but I should really contact him about, the, just say hi, but in some areas such as Beijing, that's not much money, but back in his hometown, that was actually a really good salary. So that's one thing that should be mentioned. The city versus countryside versus many other places, the salaries vary a great deal. I mean, a salary just living in Beijing would make you an extraordinarily rich man in a lot of other places and vice versa. So some other things, a martial arts teacher. This is one thing that really surprised me because teachers there make a very good hourly salary per class and they're one of the few professions that do this. I mean, doctors, lawyers as well but Per hour, a martial arts teacher would make about 150 RMB an hour. Of that, they do have to split a good amount with the school they're teaching. Same with personal trainers, 150 RMB an hour. Of that, 50 RMB normally would go to the gym and then 100 to their pocket. But this is one thing that kind of frustrated me when I was there, that they would charge so much because every place I'd go it was a standard fee. It, w it wouldn't be one person here would charge 90 RMB, this person 200. It seemed that everyone charged the same amount. And it was very discouraging because there's many times where I would want to take a couple classes but the person would say you need to pay for 10 hours at once and so it never really happened even though there were some times where I'd make exchanges such as I would teach someone English for a while and they would teach me, you know, jungle shui jiao, Chinese wrestling, or Chinese uh, kind of kickboxing, sanda. I had a few exchanges there. Just because my time, 
they really want to learn English, and a foreigner's time is about 150 RMB an hour right now. So it's just kind of an exchange. Next, doctors. People have told me make about 10,000 RMB a month, but they can get a lot of gifts. What do I mean by that is if you want to see a doctor at many places, there's long lines, there's basically that's it, long lines. There were times when I wanted to see a doctor and I would go two, three days to the hospital and every day they'd say come back the next day. I remember one time I stood in three different lines, one to register at the hospital, one to pay, one to go see the doctor, only to have them say I had to come back the next day. When I came back the next day, they told me I had to come back in the afternoon. I'd ride there at 9 in the morning. They said the first point was at 4. I went there at 4. Then I finally saw the doctor. The doctor said I had to go to this other room. And that other room said they couldn't give me an appointment for a while, and it was ridiculous. I mean, people have told me that they'll camp out overnight if their kid's sick just so they can get to see the doctor the next day. But perfect opportunity for gift giving. So doctors received a lot of gifts. Other professions, no one really talks about dentists there, but drive instructors surprising. A lot of people have told me they get gifts, very nice gifts, because classes are so full to take to take driving ins instructions that if you give a gift you can get it in a class, or if you don't you may be on a waiting list for several months. Secretaries. Secretaries around 800 RMB a month. And this is actually kind of kind of scary in a way. For example, our secretary, she's bilingual, she's able to speak English fluently, type English fluently, Chinese is perfect, of course, she's Chinese, and to pay her, you know, less than $300 a month, she worked five to six days a week, you know, on average eight and a half hours a day, and there were other people just as qualified or more qualified willing to work for less. And that was one thing about China that always amazed me, just how many people want jobs there. And there's a lot of jobs in China. In fact, that's one of the things that amazes me. There's, there's a job for everyone, and the population is so huge that when people in the U.S., ha which have a population of one-fourth, but an economy of three times, four times that of China, complain there's no jobs, you just look at China, and there's a job for everyone. There's not a skilled labor job for everyone. And there's a lot of college educated people. There are a lot of smart, hard working people, but there's just not a job for them to use their skills. So when there is a job, such, such as the one we were offering, it was at a language school where we needed someone to talk to foreigners, someone that could use English. And a lot of people were happy because they would be able to work on their English to then later on get a better job. We would have you know, 30, 40 applicants of people that went to top language schools with translation certificates from the government, all these amazing resumes, but they just couldn't find skilled jobs. They all had jobs, you know, as waitresses, cleaning, doing this, doing that, working in hotels, but weren't able to use their skills. So, next, taxi driver. Okay, this is kind of interesting because while in Beijing, sometimes you'll realize it's very hard to get a taxi. Actually, most places in China, you may ask a taxi, I want to go to this place, and he'll just sit there with his friends playing cards, and you'll wonder why he won't try to help you. I mean, doesn't he want to make money? And what I found out was they each have a certain amount they have to pay the government each month. So, for example, uh, taxi driver may have to pay 2,000 RMB to, to the government each month, or if two people use a taxi, 3,000 RMB for the month, and after that it's profit. So a lot of people won't want to take little short trips, they want to wait for a big trip. Uh, talking to some people, the average salary, 
Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> was about 2,800 RMB in pocket, so around 5,000 RMB total per month, but then after government expenses, things like that, they'd make 2,800 RMB. And these people would work 10, 12 hours a day, just driving around. But there were a lot of different ways to make more money doing this, I and mean, most people were more honest I found some people would get lost but there's not much you can do about that some people you know, turn the meter off and just say an amount uh, some people's taxi oh, what was I gonna say? oh yeah some people's taxis run on gas others run on um, uh, well, gas but the not liquid gas uh, the gas in the air not propane I forget but when their car runs on that, I talked to some people, a regular gasoline car would get about eight mile per gallon, or I mean, it costs about eight mile per uh, kilometer driven with their fuel expenses. And if it was gas, it'd be about 0.3 mile for, per um, uh, kilometer driven. So a lot of people were switching to gas-powered cars there. A lot more fuel efficient, a lot more money. I mean, you cut in one of your major expenses down, um, yeah, over half. Okay, so that's about it. If you have more questions on salaries and if you're planning to outsource to China, maybe you want an outsourced worker, uh, contact me at mychinesebusiness.com. Some things to remember, though, is if you're going to do work in China, you really do need a Chinese, well, not so much a Chinese partner, that's very important, but you will need a, Chinese, a local Chinese person wherever you're planning on doing your operation just to help you with the culture, help you with translations, help you with understanding the business practices in that area just because it's so different. And there's a lot of things that are set up only for Chinese people with a Chinese identification card to be able to do and I'll talk about a lot of this stuff more in future podcasts and future videos so once again my name is Sean or Chao Wan <laughs> Chinese name and hope everyone enjoyed this hope it was informative and I'll talk to everyone soon all right take care once again if you're watching the video of this leave a comment hit subscribe if you're listening to the podcast please tell everyone to know about it and visit my website and make a comment and hit the like button on Facebook. Alright, bye.